Hello everybody. In this video lecture, we continue talking about digestive system. So this is chapter 23, part 2. So it was supposed to be our lab session, but now when we're online, it's just going to be a regular lecture. And remember, everything that we cover in a lab session can still be uh, asked in your lecture exam. Okay, as we mentioned before, um, digestive system has two type of organs, alimentary canal or gastrointestinal tract or GI tract and accessory organs. So alimentary canal has several parts starting with mouth, oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine and large intestine. So on this diagram, um, we don't see the oral cavity or pharynx or esophagus, but here's the stomach. And um, these different colors over here, blue, then greenish, and then green, right? That's our small intestine and then large intestine. So small intestine will include three parts, duodenum, the first part, jejunum, middle part and ileum, the last part of the small intestine. But here uh, we, already, we already discussed oral cavity and we talk about tongue and uh, teeth and salivary glands. So over here we go straight to esophagus. Esophagus is flat muscular tube from laryngopharynx to stomach. It pierces diaphragm at esophageal hiatus and joins stomach at a special region that is called cardiac region and um, we have cardiac orifice. That's a point where esophagus joins the stomach. So stomach has uh, several regions itself. So it's a cardiac region or cardia surrounds the cardiac orifice, fundus, dome-shaped region beneath the diaphragm, body, mid-portion of the stomach, pyloric region that include antrum, pyloric canal, and pylorus. Pylorus is continuous with duodenum through the pyloric valve or sphincter. Then in the stomach you can see greater curvature. It's a convex lateral surface and lesser curvature concave medial surface. <coughs> Excuse me. So over here on this diagram, let's look at all this part of the stomach that we just discussed. <coughs> so here's esophagus, joins the stomach, and this region is called cardia. Then we have fundus, this dome-shaped part. The major part is the body of the stomach, and then pyloris, <coughs> excuse me, and pyloris will include antrum, that's a pyloric antrum, then pyloric canal, and a pyloric sphincter over here, and this part is duodenum. Also on this diagram you can see lesser curvature of the stomach and greater curvature of the stomach, and if you guys remember, this is where the um, greater amentum is attached to a greater curvature of the stomach. We also can see these three muscles of the stomach, longitudinal, circular, and, um, I'm sorry, oblique, circular, and longitudinal. Inside the stomach, we have um, rugae of the mucosa, Right. And um, uh, the stomach is covered by serous membrane. So that's the serous of the stomach. So lesser amentum and greater amentum. So lesser amentum from the liver to the lesser curvature of the stomach and greater amentum from the greater curvature drapes down right, and 
cover uh, all the small intestine over here. So it's anterior to the small intestine. So here's liver, right? Here's stomach. And um, this peritoneum over here is greater amentum. Um, over here, you can see lesser amentum that connects stomach and liver, right? And here's a greater amentum that was removed in this diagram. Now, from stomach, we're moving to small intestine. Small intestine is a major organ of digestion and absorption. It is 2-4 meters long, and it's from pyloric sphincter to ileocecal valve. And subdivision of small intestine are duodenum or duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. So over here, again, we can see esophagus, stomach, and small intestine over here. So duodenum um, is the first part of the small intestine. And um, duodenum, uh, the word duodenum means 12 fingers. So I guess it's about the size of 12 fingers. Uh, even we, we all have different fingers, but that's what, you know, that anatomist, early anatomist, when they look at duodenum, they measure them probably using their fingers, and this is where name came from. Um, so in a duodenum, you would find the bile duct and the main pancreatic duct that bring their pro product from the um, liver, from gallbladder, and from pancreas to the duodenum. Um, so this duct, they join at hepatopancreatic ampulla and into the duodenum at the major duodenal papilla. Um, these ducts are controlled by hepatopancreatic sphincter. So um, that's the liver over here, and we already um, talk about liver a little bit, so we know that bile is produced by liver. Then uh, bile is moved right to the gallbladder, right? And liver um, has four lobes. Over here, you can see two lobes, um, right, bigger one, and left. So right and left lobes, they have right and left hepatic duct. Then they join together, forming common hepatic duct. Right, and then um, the bile goes to the gallbladder where it's stored. So gallbladder has its own cystic duct. And now when we have cystic and common hepatic, when they come together, we have finally bile duct. And bile duct join with the main pancreatic duct, so that's pancreas, right? And um, over here, where we have hepatopancreatic ampulla and sphincter, and um, then um, bile and digestive enzyme enter duodenum through the major duodenal papilla over here. Now, liver. Liver is the largest gland in the body. Liver has four lobes, right, left, Caudate and quadrate on the visceral surface. Um, right over here, what separates right and left liver is falciform ligament. And you can also see gallbladder over here. So falciform ligament separates the larger right and smaller left lobes, suspends liver from the diaphragm and anterior abdominal wall, and round ligament or ligamentum teres is a remnant of fetal umbilical vein along free edge of falciform ligament. So during embryonic development, we have this fetal umbilical vein. And of course, after the birth, it's now not present. So whatever is left, we call round ligament. Right, so here you can see part of this round ligament or ligamentum teres. 
and this is visceral part of the liver and this is our caudate lobe over here and this is quadrate lobe and where we have this quadrate lobe right there we have gallbladder So lysamentum anchors liver to stomach, hepatic artery and vein enter liver at the porta hepatis, and bile ducts, we already said we have common hepatic duct that leaves the liver, cystic duct connects to gallbladder, and bile duct formed by the union of the two above. So we have right and left hepatic duct, then they join forming common hepatic, common hepatic and cystic make bile duct. Okay, here's this diagram again, right? So here's our right and left hepatic. This is common hepatic, cystic and bile duct. Now, large intestine. Large intestine um, has four major function, reabsorption of water and mineral ions such as sodium and chloride, formation and temporary storage of feces, maintaining a resident population of over 500 species of bacteria, and also inside large intestine we have bacteria fermentation of indigestible material. Regions of large intestine. So the first part of large intestine right here, where small intestine, ileum, and large intestine join together, this is called cecum. Uh, so cecum is a pouch, right, right this, the first part, and then we have appendix, this part attached to the cecum. And then we have colon, so that's all colon, right, rectum, and anal canal. Now, the colon itself, it has part that goes up, and we call it ascending colon. Then it makes this turn, and this turn is called right colic flexure or right hepatic flexure, because this is on the right side. This is where liver is located. So at right colic flexure, colon be becomes transverse colon. So that's a transverse colon. Then it make another turn. Now it's left colic flexure or left splenic flexure because that's where we will have spleen. And then a uh, colon goes down. So we call it descending colon. Then it makes this S shape structure and it's called sigmoid colon. Then rectum is a straight part of the large intestine and uh, anal canal with um, external and internal anal sphincters. Uh, you also can see that we have this mesentery over here, right? And uh, this mesentery is called mesocolon, right over here. Now, I also want you to look at structure of a large intestine, and you see like this, uh, like pouches, right, these pouches, this is called hostrum. So hostrum is one, hostra is plural, so it has this hostra, right? Then this uh, gray line right in the middle, this is muscle. This is longitudinal muscle, and it's called tinea coli. The tinea coli. And now it says this yellow pieces over here. This is called epiploic appendages. And they store fat. Right? So that's very specific feature of the large intestine that you will not see in a small intestine. Right. So over here, that's unique feature of large intestine, tinea coli three bands of longitudinal smooth muscle in a, a tunica uh, muscularis external, hostra, pocket-like sacs caused by this tension, right, of the muscle of tinea coli or by the tone of tinea coli, and epiploic appendages, 
fat filled pouches of visceral peritoneum. Um, now, ascending and descending colon are retroperitoneal. Transverse colon and sigmoid colon are anchored via mesocolons, right? So um, that's our transverse mesocolon, and this is sigmoid mesocolon. And mesocolon is the same as mesentery right over here. It's just modification of the serous membrane, modification of peritoneum, and that's actually this greater amentum over here that was lifted up. So rectum it has three rectal valves that stop feces from being passed with the gas. Rectum means straight, so that's a straight part of the large intestine. Anal canal, the last segment of the large intestine. In the anal canal, we have sphincters. And sphincters are, you know, circular muscles that um, can open and close the lumen of this um, uh, anal canal. So internal anal sphincter made of smooth muscles, and that means it is involuntary. An external anal sphincter made of skeletal muscle, that means you can control, so you can relax or um, constrict the skeletal muscles. Also, superficial venous plexuses um, are present in the anal canal, and if they inflame, this is what form hemorrhoids. So that's our last diagram here. So you can see rectum, and here's the rectal valves. Only one is shown, but we have three of them. Right, and um, this is the anal canal, um, and uh, here our hemorrhoidal veins. So when they um, became inflamed, this is what caused the uh, hemorrhoids. And um, this muscle over here, that's a skeletal muscle, and it's external anal sphincter, this one, and over here, that's a smooth muscle that are internal anal sphincter. Okay, so that's the last slide. Um, and uh, we finish um, digestive system. We finish chapter 23. Make sure you watch both parts, part one and part two. And I hope it was helpful.